this week on The Toast. Can you please take your name off your phone? My wife went through my phone and uh, maybe calling you. I guess I, sh- I should be listening to, s- to say that I'm, I'm a lesbian, and uh, it was uh, a late, later in life uh, recognition of that fact. I'll sleep naked in Times Square for a month if either of them or anyone else could prove one factual error in the book. And now it's time for The Toast. Well, thank you and welcome once again to The Toast. In order to make the show look better by comparison, here's a clip of Lady Gaga's recent concert in Montreal. So there we go, the bar of professionalism is now lowered. Let's go stargazing. As if anyone's talking about anything else. Tiger Woods continues to dominate headlines. Though the golf megastar's run-in with his neighbor's tree remains shrouded in mystery, the Florida Highway Patrol announced this week they're issuing Tiger a careless driving ticket, saying cops take driver responsibility very seriously. Careless driving is a moving violation, and upon conviction may result in a fine of $164. Oh my God, how the hell is Tiger Woods going to come up with that kind of cash? Well, if the world's greatest golfer somehow surmounts those legal ramifications, there's still the tabloids to address, and they're flocking to him like a Malawian to a Jolie. With the National Enquirer suggesting the crash may be the result of a domestic disturbance between Tiger and his wife over an affair Mr. Woods is said to have had with club promoter Rachel Uckatel. Now Us Weekly is reporting Tiger also carried on a relationship with several other women, notably reality TV star Jamie Grubbs, and she has a voice message to prove it. Hey, it's, uh, it's Tiger. I need you to do me a huge favor. Um, can you please, uh, take your name off your phone? My wife went through my phone and, uh, maybe calling you. So if you can, please take your name off that. Well, that's slightly embarrassing. Upon the call's release, Tiger essentially copped to his extramarital relations via a statement on his website saying, quote, I have let my family down and I regret those transgressions with all my heart. Oh, such a complicated matter, especially considering there's no video of the crash that got everything started. Luckily, the Chinese news outlets mocked up an animation of how it all supposedly went down. Whoa, pretty damning evidence if you ask me, and thank goodness for those subtitles. Wouldn't have understood a word of that. And speaking of marriages in turmoil, the Brad and Angelina rumor mill is turning once again. The pot stirrer this time around is Ian Halperin, author of Brangelina, the untold story of Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. The book dropped this week and alleges Brad and Angie have deceived the public into thinking their relationship is healthy. While behind closed doors, the two fight constantly, cheat on each other, and argue over substance abuse issues. Mr. Halperin says he gives the couple no more than a year and a half before they call it quits. And when questioned about the validity of his reporting, Ian made a stomach-turning promise to E.T. I'll sleep naked in Times Square for a month if either of them or anyone else could prove one factual error in the book. So seeing you sleep naked in Times Square is supposed to be motivation to debunk your book? I do believe the man will go unchallenged. Brilliant. Shall we speak on matters of the tube variety? Oh, Rusty is bumping Tony from behind. Holy cow, Tony flips his car. Think about that for a moment now. Kiss my fat. Do you remember that sitcom Family Ties? That show was so gay. No, seriously, it was apparently gay. Because Meredith Baxter, who played the TV mom, just swung by the Today Show to drop this bomb on Matt Lauer. I should be listening to, to say that I'm, I'm a lesbian. And uh, it was uh, a late, later in life uh, recognition of that fact. Whoa. So you're telling me the mother of conservative bellwether, Alex P. Keaton, prefers the fairer sex? Huh? Consider my world rocked. Ms. Baxter says she's lived a somewhat openly gay life with her partner in LA, but her decision to take it worldwide on today came after Perez Hilton threatened to out her without permission. Cause that's cool. Slow news day, eh? Guess that black eyed peas beat down didn't teach you a lesson, did it? Hey, show us where it hurts. Right here. Where? Right here. Ah. 
Moving on, this fella could soon be pushing french fries. With media powerhouse Comcast poised to gobble up NBC, some speculate Jay Leno's new show could be a casualty of the merge. To say the late night host has somewhat underperformed ratings wise in his new slot would be to say Donatella Versace is somewhat funny looking. With Jay constantly getting pimp slapped by rival David Letterman and NBC affiliates nationwide up in arms, the Washington Post is reporting if the NBC Comcast merger goes through, the new bosses could show Jay the door. With the paper saying, quote, if Leno makes it through the season, it would almost certainly be his last at 10. So let's get hypothetical and say Jay goes, what would fill the programming slot? Hmm. I have an idea. John and Kate, Goslin Gate, 2009. Uh, <laughs> okay. So this would normally be the place where we tell you what happened with the mess that is John and Kate plus eight. But last week's episode was the final one. And the TLC lawsuit against John doesn't go to trial till April. Crap. So now we have a programming slot to fill. Oh yeah, come on. You know you'd take water skiing squirrel over that any day. Let's finish with the real world. <laughs> Tis the holiday season, folks, and you know as well as I do that that means we can expect a crapalicious influx of cheesy holiday movies. But must they soil the name of an American icon? I suppose they must, because this year's selection includes Everybody's Fine, starring Robert De Niro. Bobby D plays a papa who travels the country to drop in on his kids after they blow off his plans for the clan to get together for the holidays. Upon his unannounced arrivals, Mr. De Niro finds his offspring's lives aren't exactly as they've described via phone. I don't know what it means with you kids. You always told your mother everything. You never told me anything. We tell you the good news and spare you the bad. Tell me the bad news as well as the good news from now on. Mom used to say, make your dad proud. No, no, you're not proud of me. It's not true. As you might guess, everyone learns a lesson and the family ends up close sir. No, no. Yes. I'm a Scrooge. And speaking of awkward family reunions, Brothers hits theaters as well. Tobey Maguire stars as Captain Sam Cahill, a Marine presumed dead when his helicopter takes a dive. Sam's brother Tommy, aka Jake Gyllenhaal, then takes to Sam's family to fill the void in more ways than one. But when the good captain turns up alive and returns home, well, somebody's got some splaining to do. If you say Thanks for taking care of us. I didn't expect that. Did you sleep with her? Uh, wouldn't you? And define sleep with, because I think there may be a loophole here. Finally, we have Armored. This one stars Mr. Matt Dillon as an armored truck driver who convinces a group of his coworkers to lift a stash of cash from his own company. As you might imagine, the plot seems less than foolproof to a few naysayers, including the company newbie. You mean Baines, Quinn Palmer, and Dobbs. Are you crazy? You think last week was a joke? It was a test run. <laughs> <laughs> promise me nobody gets hurt. That's a promise. Now, why would you think anyone would get hurt? <laughs> well, it's time to bail for the week. Check out past episodes at ToastedRev.com. And for all you YouTubers, subscribe to us, username ToastedRev. Thanks as always for watching. This has been fun. Let's do it again soon.